Okay, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of the committee. We've been joined by Councilmember Andy Cohen, Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Francisco Moya, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, and Councilmember Steve Matteo. Um, today the committee will be voting on seven items. An expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, two resolutions to approve the Council's fiscal 2020 operating budget, a transparency resolution, and two Article 11 property tax exemptions. Let's start with the budget modifications. The first modification is an expense budget modification that represents movements of approximately $1.8 billion of funding between and within city agencies to implement expense budget changes which were reflected in the February 2019 financial plan. The second is a revenue budget modification that recognizes $868.5 million in new revenues and combines $400 million of prior year payables and $1.4 million from the General Reserve implementing changes reflected in the February 2019 financial plan. Of these funds, the total amount of $2.65 billion is added to the budget stabilization account which will prepay debt service for fiscal 2020. The third and fourth items are the Council's fiscal 20 operating budget, which totals $87.6 million. This is divided into $65.3 million for personnel services and $22.3 million for other than personnel services. The next is the transparency resolution, which sets forth the, personal, the, which sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council or, an, or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the, sub before the subcontractor can be approved. Benjamin Smith from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Lastly, we have the two Article 11 exemptions. The first is 369 East 8th Street in Councilmember Rivera's District of Manhattan, which would receive a full 32-year exemption to preserve 29 units of affordable housing. The second is Glendale Apartments in Councilmember Holden's District in Queens, uh, which would receive a partial 40-year exemption to preserve 72 units of affordable housing. And we do have um, a, a, somebody who wants to speak before we vote. That is Felice Rosner, Rosa. Uh, and she, I want to welcome her and ask her to come up to the witness table and to speak. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, a resident at 368 East 8th Street in Manhattan, and I'd like to read a letter that we've prepared to present to you. Uh, Dear Chairman Drone, we understand that our request for an Article 11 exemption is on the Finance Committee's calendar for this Thursday as file number T. 2019-4022. We, the board members and tenants of 368 East 8th Street HDFC, request the support of the New York City Council towards our Article 11 property tax exemption application, which has been submitted and is pending the Council's approval. Our Councilwoman, Carlina Rivera, supports our request 
as we have shown her that we are reliable, responsible, and trustworthy in our commitment to preserving our building as, affordable as an affordable housing resource, as we have for 40 years. Our building's members reflect the diversity of the Lower East Side in age, race, creed, and sexual orientation. There are owner members who have grown up in our building and have lived their entire lives here. Our building was a force for stability during decades of neglect and crime in our neighborhood. HPD is also supporting our request for Article 11 property tax exemption. We have worked closely with this agency to apply for a Green Housing Preservation Program, GHPP, loan for the building's rehabilitation and will be signing a new regulatory agreement upon closing. We appreciate your consideration to this matter and look forward to your support and approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have your testimony here written as well, and we're going to have that on file. I thank you for coming in to give testimony. Thank you. All right. Are there any questions from council members? We've been joined by two other council members, our Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and Council Member Robert Cornegie. Okay, and with that, I'm going to ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Cumbo. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Gordenchik. I, but I do want to say that I am disappointed, even though I love the people that work at the Department of Sanitation, that we have to dip in a relatively snowless winter. Um, they were spreading salt around like it was, I don't know what it was like, it was like something that didn't cost anything. And um, I am uh, going to vote for this, but I hope that in the future, um, the other side of City Hall will be a little more careful uh, when they send people out. It's also an environmental hazard as well as spread all that salt when it doesn't snow. So thank you. Adams. Agreeing with my colleague, Councilmember Grudentrick, I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Matteo. I'm voting no on MN3 and no on the transparency resolution, I and the rest. I vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are adopted with the exceptions of the preconsidered resolution transparency and preconsidered M, the MN3, have been adopted by a vote of nine in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Okay, and with that, we'll hold the vote open for another 10 minutes. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. <laughs>